are listening to the Gadget Flow podcast, the podcast about everything regarding products, entrepreneurship, and crowdfunding. And this week, I got to sit down with Peter Salib of Nobility Partners. Uh, Peter is a total beast when it comes to helping brands and products succeed in the world of PR and social media. We had a great conversation, and he gives a ton of useful information, useful tips and tricks. Uh, so without further ado, here's my interview with Peter Salib. Okay, I am here with Peter Salib. Uh, thank you so much, Peter, for being on the Gadget Flow podcast. I'm super pumped to have you on. Yes, it's my pleasure to be on. And uh, I got to give a shout out for Gadget Flow for uh, introducing me to you and bringing me on. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're, we're super excited to have you on. So real quick, for people who may not know who you are or what it is you do, could you give us just a little bit of background in, uh, in what you do? Yeah, definitely. So I am in the PR space and uh, we actually work with a lot of really cool emerging tech clients uh, in all sorts of different industries from e-commerce to fashion tech, ad tech, nightlife, and some fintech, uh, even crypto and blockchain stuff. So uh, we're really deeply invested in the event space and are really networked with all sorts of people and in industries. So we're able to do all sorts of fun stuff with, um, you know, all the different people we work with. Cool, cool, man. So basically, um, you guys, you help facilitate like exactly what do you do? You help get products and brands kind of distributed to uh, different publications and stuff, right? You yes, like that's, the, definitely, the... that's definitely the main part of it, right? So okay. when, when there's companies launching new products, right, it's all about marketing. They need exposure. They need credibility. Uh, they need to establish trust uh, with, with everyone. And so getting articles in Forbes and all these big publications and even niche publications is uh, really helpful and pivotal for a lot of companies to attract that investor, to start that conversation, to have uh, a good sales material, a good resource to put in front of uh, people that they want to approach for whatever reason, whether it's a partnership, uh, a client, an investor, uh, or even an employee, you know, a very talented employee loves to see, uh, you know, good publicity. Right, right, right. Totally, man. That is super, super important stuff. Um, so I, I just have a few kind of practical questions for you today. Um, I think on the show, our goal is to really try and dissect the minds of the experts. And you're definitely an expert in this space. And so I just had a few pretty practical questions for you, um, if you wouldn't mind. So first, I'm just going to start with um, say I'm, I'm an emerging brand and I have this product. What, what would you say are some of the best practices, um, for getting more press for your brand or product? Yeah, there's definitely, uh, you know, a handful of things that, you know, anyone can do without being a, a marketing guru and, uh, you know, starting on, on their own, uh, especially if you are crowdfunding, uh, th there's a lot of fun ways, uh, to get involved with stuff, to, to add publicity and to um, kind of piggyback on already trending things. Um, so if there is a really popular sort of emoji or meme that's relevant to your company, uh, you, you piggyback off that. If you're creating a product that's like featured in some type of movie as like a main thing, uh, like Limitless, you know, if you are creating some sort of like Limitless pill and that movie comes out, you want to try to piggyback off that publicity. Um, mm. So I think of uh, one thing that's really useful is uh, association. Find ways to associate yourself with something that's already hot and ride that wave. Mm, that is actually really smart. You'll notice that with, with uh, you know, certain companies will really take hold of that. And they might even push releases back or things like that to actually catch a wave, you know, of a new movie coming out or things like that that could really help the culture um, and like connect to that culture of whatever that thing is. Um, that's really smart. So, okay. So then uh, you're, you're preparing, like, how do you prepare well for 
uh, to successfully launch a new product or brand? Like, how do you prepare to do that in a way that you're not just flying by the seat of your pants? Like, what are some what are some tips you could give about preparation? Yeah, I think um, part of preparation is is really getting a good landscape of all the different opportunities uh, available to you. So I, I think the exploration phase is uh, is really crucial to that process, and and knowing all the different options and all the different ways you can market and sell, and um, you know work with different influencers and different brands to co promote. Um, I think all of those are really important to have. So that way, when you launch your product and you're ready to ship, you have distribution channels in 10 different places and you're not just selling off of your own website and Amazon, right? Um, so sure. reach out to subscription boxes if, if you think you're a good add-on or a good you know, part of that box. Um, you know, do all those sort of things and, and get that distribution channels, um, get all of them ready. So when you have something ready to ship, it's all set to go. Sure. So practically speaking, like uh, you just straight up, would you su- just suggest people like email these people? Would you say uh, trying to call them? How do you how do you connect with people like this in a, in a good way? Yeah, absolutely. So that's actually something that I've been working on. And, and it really depends kind of on the scale of the operation, right? So if you're mm-hmm. uh, reaching out to like Stitch Fix, if you're in apparel and you want to reach out to Stitch Fix, it's a little bit harder to get through them. Uh, there, there's a, a whole process. There's no real clear cut form to fill out to submit anything. Um, it's highly curated stuff. So they don't really want to take a lot of submissions because it's apparel is super saturated. So imagine if they had a form out, you know, anyone who makes a $4 t-shirt is going to try to get it in there. Right. right. Um, so they have a huge gatekeeper, um, you know, thing going on. So is you got to realize what gate um, is set up for you and, um, you know, come up with creative ways on, on how to overcome them. So, you know, I love LinkedIn. I use a lot of LinkedIn. I always try to get a warm introduction uh, as most as possible. But, you know, you just do cold outreach and you reach out in multiple different platforms, uh, social media, LinkedIn, uh, directly on the website if possible. Um, try, you know, post on social media and ask if anyone can introduce you at all. If you don't know somebody that already has that for sure. Right. Yeah. And then if it's a smaller operation, then it could be as simple as filling out the contact us form and and that's it, you know, and then they'll, they'll be interested in and schedule something with you. So I think it's both ends and everywhere in between. Right. So is there like a ratio? Like, cause I'm, I'm picturing now, like, do you approach it? Like, let's get as many relevant, like relevant to the product or, or brand or service or whatever. Let's get as many big publications and as many smaller ones as possible. Or is there a little bit more strategy there? Do you try and, um, or is it just basically let's get as many people talking about this as we possibly can? Yeah, so um, both, you know, it it depends, you know, we wouldn't want to get everything in one month and then, you know, not have anything further to do in month two, three, four and five and six. Right. Right. So so you want to space out your activity over a period of time. And and so so you build up a good cadence and a a good stability, just like people have um, consistent social media posts. It it looks Mm -hmm. really good when you have consistent publicity. Um, from big names and, and middle middle sized names and small names, and um, and there's a lot of you know you got to take into account lead time. So you might pitch a publication and they might be like, "This is a perfect story," but like for next month's issue. And so it's like you did all that work and it's basically done, but you're not going to see it for another month. So like you know you still want something for this month. Um, so it, it's uh, it, it's a whole sort of lead time and. Um, you know, balancing act sort of to, to build a consistency and cadency around, around um, you know, press and PR. Sure. That makes a lot of sense, man. That's why you guys are the, the experts with it. <laughs> so um, we were curious, Evan, the CEO of Gadget Flow, he, he threw this question at me for you. And I'm curious to hear your response as well as um, what do you think the, the current state of press and the media is like? Uh, presently, like now compared to like 10 years ago, like 
2008. Like, how is it different from about 10 years ago, would you say? Uh, well, you know, to be completely honest with you, 10 years ago, I wasn't really too much into PR uh, as I am now. I was more on the consumer side of things. And I can tell you uh, sort of both angles. Um, so as a consumer at that point, uh, it was it was very interesting because, you know, that was around the time Flipboard was coming out and mm -hmm. um, news was really penetrating social media. And so, you know, I was a part of that whole transition as a consumer and I uh, I was on board and then I quickly off boarded because of just, you know, I picked up real quick on how much just fake news and just real low quality um, content that was coming out. Like they're just adding mm -hmm. to information overload and it, it gets more difficult to cut through the noise. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that was one of the reasons I wanted to get involved with PR was, was to be part of the solution and, and telling the real stories um, that can impact people and impact companies and, and create real change. And, mm. and so I think, um, you know, now what it's like is that it's even more um, accelerated than it was back then because now you have all this new technology and more people on Facebook just spreading the news. So it's not even mm -hmm. the source of the news that's spreading it. It's people believing it and spreading it further. So the distribution of the news is, is and, and all that is quite interesting. But from a PR angle and like marketing for companies angle, um, I think it hasn't changed too much. I think it still has a lot of value and it's um, super useful for a lot, a lot of people. And I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon, but the landscape is definitely changing. And um, I think it's changing towards making sure that the quality uh, stays uh, as high as possible. So everyone is, I think, is coming up with new ways um, to, to sort of uh, accomplish that. Right. I see that more and more to myself is like with the, when you talk about like information overload, like I just see that everywhere I go on, on social or online, it's like, there's so much stuff just everywhere that it's kind of turned into like this, like battleground of just the best content wins. And if you make really good stuff that is like telling the truth and is connecting with people, that's your greatest asset you know, um, which is really, really cool. So that brings me to my next question, which is like, so in your, in your guys profession, online versus offline press. So is there, I, I, there has to be a noticeable shift, um, towards like an online dominance in the space. I mean, how, how do you see that? Yeah. Are you talking like, um, print versus digital? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, digital is definitely dominating right now, but there's a lot of print still going on. And I, I think, you know, the, the print magazine and, and print press, um, you know, they, they have sort of like the same attributions that textbooks do, where no matter how good we get at online education, I feel like everyone is still going to carry around books physically. And as mm -hmm. long as we keep writing online, I think people are always going to want to flip through pages. It's, uh, it, it's, it's just a very natural thing ingrained in our brains to, to flip pages. And, you know, you see, you see kids now, and I'm guilty of this. I, I, I swipe the magazine expecting the page to turn before, um, <laughs> you know, and, and you just see kids, fl you know, flicking everything, expecting stuff to happen um, where that's not the kids. So. I think we're still in the generation where, where we like to flip uh, pages and stuff like that. So um, a lot of trade publications, a lot of like uh, very industry publications and such, uh, they always have like a print uh, in addition to, to digital if they're not just uh, if they're not just digital. Right, right, right. So how, how should I, I hear that too? And, and I still see people you know, totally reading print and all that stuff. So, but how in, in today's landscape should brands maybe respond to that shift? Even maybe like older brands who are around when print was the big thing, you know, like how, how are, what's an effective way for people to respond to the, to the shifts that are currently happening there? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, simply be nimble. I mean, you have to keep up with the ages, right? So you have to be doing what's new. Um, You know, there's musicians that, you know, understand piracy is killing the game. So they figured out, well, maybe we should just give it out for free and just take donations for it instead. And they ended up making way more money than they did had they distributed through a record label. Um, There's musicians distributing albums on the dark web, uh, on Onion websites, um, instead of the traditional route. So I think you've always got to be creative and figure out h- how do you best market yourself and tell your story because that, that pipeline is constantly changing. Um, so you, you need to be innovative. But I think startups should definitely always leverage print and online. Uh, a lot of the airlines do a lot of print, right, because there's a magazine in every seat pocket of every seat on an, every airplane. Um, so mm-hmm. all of those Delta Sky mags and, and Sky Mall, um, you know, that's one magazine that's invaluable to be placed in. So I would always be chasing print. I would always be chasing online. Um, it's just got to make sure because uh, the print is much more, um, you know, demographic centric and, and uh, it, the, the demographics are much more important for the print than it is online. Uh, so you got to make sure that that's right. relevant to you. Totally. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, I, I, I see people pulling those things out on planes all the time. That's true. There are a lot of eyes there still. So um, so talk a little bit about what you see for the future of PR. Yeah, sure. I, Just in general, like what, what do you see for it in the future? Um, I think video is going to be huge for PR. And I'm really excited to see what virtual reality does for PR because that's going to add a whole new landscape to tell stories and interact with your community. True. Do you think that's uh, that's pretty close on the horizon for that to be a, a reality? VR. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I've I was at CES, uh, you know, two months ago, and I got to try the new HTC Vive Pro at their uh, press conference. And I did a racing simulation, you know, where the seat moves and everything with hydraulics. And it was incredibly fun. You know, I got lost. I I lost track of time. And um, it's incredible. I I think, you know, as as far as right now goes, it's mostly for like entertainment purposes. But once we really figure out like what we can do with it and and how to have real good conversations and and community like interaction in VR, I think that's when we'll start to see. Um, you know, better, more implementation in the, in the PR world with VR. Yeah, definitely, man. I am very interested to see what happens in the VR space in the near future. So uh, only two more questions for you. This is not really related to PR. Um, I recently moved to New York City. Um, so as a newbie here, can you explain to me and our audience why it's better to live in New York when you're a hustler? <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So I'm a, I'm a Jersey boy, um, but I, okay. I ventured to New York multiple times a week for many, many years now um, for many reasons, right? Nightlife, business life, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, so New hmm. York is... You know, it's if you've ever been to Vegas, you land in Vegas and you're just automatically excited because you feel like anything can happen. Like you've just heard mm. all these stories. You just you, you basically know that you, you can expect anything to happen. And that's sort of what, you know, New York has that sort of vibe. But it goes more than that because Las Vegas, it feels like anything can happen to you. But when you go to New York, you feel like you can accomplish anything. And so I Mm. think that's a very different vibe. And um, being in that environment gives people confidence and it inspires people because there's so much hustle around you and you just become part of that that movement, you know, um, part of that fire and you, you feed off of it and you feed it as well. And that's why, you know, the meetup uh, environment and all the events and networking events and um, are, are really big in the city and they have, you know, multiple thousand people meetups on rooftop bars that just take over. And so I think because it's so densely populated and, and very hip and very fast paced, New York is super fast paced. Um, like when you're walking in the sideway, like you, like each person on the sidewalk is an obstacle and you have to dodge them to get to where you're going <laughs> as fast as possible. 
right? That that's how New York is. Yeah. And so, um, if you can keep up, I think it's uh, really useful for a lot of people to be there. It makes a lot of sense. If Silicon Valley is not your spot, New York probably is. Yeah, man, I couldn't agree more. I've been I moved here in December, and it's so true. Just like the walking around the city and being around different people who are all like clearly striving to do great things and just working really hard to achieve their goals and achieve their dreams. And, um, you're right, man. Like I think my wife and I were finally at the point to where when, uh, (laughs) <laughs> when people are walking in front of you and they're walking slow, you start losing your mind because I'm, you know, I'm now a fast walker officially now that I moved here. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. There's just so much opportunity here to meet new people and to, uh, to connect and make great things. So cool, man. Well, I have one last question for you and it's very, very straightforward. Do you have any last thoughts um, or imparting words to help young entrepreneurs or uh, anyone out there with their PR moving forward? Uh, Yeah. You know, I got to say it's, um, you know, just go out there, uh, establish relationships, try to meet people in person, Um, try to get in person with these people, try to go to events um, you know, the cold emailing, all that stuff works. It's a numbers game. Um, it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But I think when you get that FaceTime interaction in and they put a face to the name and the name to the product and all of that, I think that's extremely beneficial. And when people get to pick it up and try it and play with it and touch it and, and smell it or eat it, whatever it is that you're doing, if you can let them try it and do it instead of um, just pitching them, I think that's a big difference. And, and I'm all about the personal interaction uh, over the online, if possible, 10 out of 10. Um, yeah. but if you're going online, yeah. uh, it's just grit. You, you just got to be networked, ask for intros, be relentless, um, don't be rude, uh, and, and, you know, and kind of make sure it's the right fit. Um, cause you don't want to burn any bridges. You don't want to get blacklisted or anything like that. You know, you don't want to piss any, beat any people off. Um, so, so yeah, I, I would suggest going to events and, and getting to, uh, the press people that are covering the events there and, and trying to do in-person stuff as much as possible, uh, as well, in addition to all of the online outreach that you would do. Right. I'm not assuming totally, that you man. were doing it on your that's own, awesome. right? And that's not like you were working with someone else. That's just if you're bootstrapped and it's a one-man show, a two-man show, and it's just, you know, you guys are grinding. Right. Exactly. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I appreciate it. So where can people find you? Where do you want people to go check out your stuff and maybe hit you up to, to do some work with you? Yeah, definitely. So everyone can visit notabilitypartners.com. And they can check out more information about me and my team. I have a great team that we work with. Uh, So I want to give a shout out to Jordan and Brian. And um, so feel free to check out the website, read about um, what we do and how we all work together because we are a diverse uh, group of people. And uh, it's very interesting how, you know, you bring together the right people and um, an amazing system gets built. Absolutely, man. And we'll include all that information in the show notes as well for people to check out. So Peter, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. And I think you gave a lot of really, really helpful and valuable uh, insight today. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Alex. Happy to be on and um, really excited to uh, hear this online with Gadget Flow. That was our interview with Peter Salib. We were so, so happy to have him on the show. And you should definitely go check out all of his stuff and you can find the links to, to all of the things he's connected to in our show notes for today's episode. This podcast is made by Gadget Flow, and we are proud to be the number one platform to find new and awesome gadgets. So make sure to keep checking the site for all the new products we're curating every single day. And we will be back next week with another episode. So in the meantime, please go rate and review our show in iTunes. Thank you so much for listening to the Gadget Flow Podcast.